Hello and welcome back. Okay, today I want to look at this electronic dice kit from Mitch Electronics. Now I unpacked it in a recent mailbag and I'm quite curious to get it working and to see if I can decode how it works. Right, so there are four 10K resistors, that must be those. Three 330 ohm resistors. And then three single value ones. Okay, so Mitch Electronics provides fairly comprehensive instructions. Now, the thing that I'm interested about this is I see two 555 chips and a 4017 logic chip. And then it's just kind of couple of transistors and passives. So there's obviously something quite interesting and quite efficient going on with this. I'll have to try and decode what that is, but let's build it first. Okay, so R6, 7 and 8 are the 330 ohm resistors. So that would be these three. And one of these must be 470 for R5. So it'll be the 1K, and that's the 470. Oh, I've got a blob of solder over this hole. That's going to be annoying. Right, so R three was this one K. Right, okay, so one, two, nine and ten are all ten Ks. So that's these four. And R4 is 680K, which is going to be this one, by a process of elimination. I really should have got my PCB holder out for this, but it's a lot more difficult to get the microscope to see stuff. And I think it makes for a more interesting video if you can see what's going on. Right, what next? We're supposed to do this by component depth. Okay, so now we've got six of these 100 nanofarad capacitors. Right, 
the whole separation on these seems ever so slightly larger than what's appropriate for the specific components. It's not easy to make them sit flush nicely. It'll work fine though. We're going to do this switch next. These transistors do not line up very nicely with the package. Now, lots of LEDs. Right, so the short wire should point towards the square pin. Okay, I've actually got a spare LED here. Right, just this big electrolytic. I'm not actually a big fan of doing um, power connectors like this. The cables tend to be quite fragile. That wasn't too bad. Okay. Play hunt the battery. Let's give this a try. Okay, so we got a five, another five, four. Okay, I think this is a success on the build. I like the way it cycles through the values. Now, trying to decode how this works, I've already got a bit of a clue from looking at the circuit board to start with. And that's this pin on this 555, which is the output, is wired into this pin on this one, which is the reset. So my guess is we've got this 555 is configured as a mono stable. So when I push the button, this capacitor is getting charged up and then it's gradually dropping down until it hits the threshold. So that holds the rest of the circuit on for a, a small amount of time. And if the output there is going into the reset here, this one's going to be configured as an A stable. And so this is probably ticking over at the rate where we're seeing the values change here. And then once the voltage in the capacitor drops below its threshold, that brings the reset up and that stops this one from oscillating. So this kind of pair of chips, the behavior of those is fairly straightforward. But that means that everything else about turning this into a, a dice symbol is being done by this half of the circuit. And I'd like to decode that. It's a really cool little circuit though. Right, so this chip was a 4017. Okay, so this is the 4017 CMOS chip. Now, this is a decade counter with 10 decoded outputs. So what this appears to be is a combination between a counter chip and a demultiplexer. 
So it's interesting with the 74 series chips I've been using, this would take me two chips. Right. Ten. Eight, seven, nine, thirteen, eleven, twelve. So we have six wires that are then activating seven LEDs. So it's 10 and 13 are on. So it's one is just seven. Six is everything but seven. Five is everything but nine and 12. Okay, so here's my little truth table lined up. So seven is unique, eight and 11 are the same, nine and 12 are the same, 10 and 13 are the same. Okay, this is interesting. So we got six wires and four outputs. Okay, I've got theory on this. Okay, so these three lines here, they are basically wired up using these diodes as a small diode matrix which I find particularly interesting. I've done some experimentation with those before. I'll link my video in. But this line, so LEDs 10 and 13, so that's the opposite corners. Now, they're on for everything apart from one. And looking back at the diagram, that is coming from this line 12, C out. Ah, oh, that's curious. So carry out. Is high. All the way up to five. It's curious. So that's going to come on when Q4 is active. That is five. Okay, so right, so the carry out goes low for half the cycle, which with the truncated looping using wiring the sixth point back into the reset means that it can use carry to generate this signal so it's high for everything apart from the fifth point so they've remapped these lines to make the led generation simpler that's really quite clever i doubt i would have come up with that i would probably have i could have inverted this one so i would have had one so i would have done this with eight diodes down here instead of six but I could have made it work okay now that is a really clever circuit I really enjoyed putting that together as a few of these components are not as neat as it perhaps could have been mostly because I, I didn't employ any component holding but it worked that was fun Hope you found this interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.